the way we are. So, okay, hey, welcome tonight, guys. It's good to get around and let you know where we're at and where we're going next. It's kind of fun. So, for those of you who've been playing with it already, uh, what's your take on it? For those of you who've been hopping into it, um, are you finding it easy? The, the coolest thing that's happened to me, I think, is that it must be the easiest thing we've put out because I'm not getting hardly any um, usage questions. I'm getting feedback items and items for improvement. That's awesome. Keep those coming because we are actually implementing them as fast as we can as you speak, uh, as you bring them up to us, things that we feel you're completely right about. Other things, it's um, we got to figure out the right thing to do because what you're asking is either too specific or it could be done another way. Uh, but exactly, we're, we're doing what you're asking. Uh, and we're enjoying it. The feedback's great. And so we've been, like, one guy said, hey, you know, can we change the background color of the scheduled service form, that, that email block that's in the front page? It's like, now that's done. Uh, you guys can do that. Uh, there are other things like that. Another one that just came in that I didn't even think about. Somebody said, hey, can we change the term scheduled service because it's showing up on all the templates. It's showing up whether it's the uh, plumber template or anything else. It's showing up. And I thought, oh, <laughs> Uh, forgot all about that, right? So, yeah, I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but, yeah, just to point this one out, see how it says schedule service here, right? Well, on all of them it's saying schedule service, the landscaping one, everything else. So that will definitely happen. We'll make this editable so that you can edit it in the background. Uh, right now you can, you can, at least you can do this, you know, if you export the site, okay, and put it up, then you can go into the HTML page and edit it and just change the wording where it shows up in the header. Uh, from scheduled service to whatever it's supposed to be, right? As a matter of fact, I think we can see it just on this on this view, you know, schedule. Yeah, it's right there. So when you export the page, it becomes an index.html page in your zip file. You know, you can unzip and open it. Uh, and right here where it says scheduled service in your H3 block, just type over it in Notepad and make it say whatever you want it to say, like um, request showing in the case of the real estate block, okay? Uh, but but we are hearing you on that because it's true. This should be editable, and so we're going to make it editable. That'll happen real soon. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, let me go through a list of, like, where we're at and updates. And you see a one of them at a glance, right, this whole thing with the background image. We just put it in there to test it out. But we've got it going now on other ones. You guys have also seen it on the homeopathic one. If I were just to switch to that real fast, uh, not the admin panel, just the front end. What do you see here? You see this strip across the back. It's actually a background image, right? The background page color is set to work with the background image, right? And so now we've made it possible for you to put images on any of these templates, okay? So I got a list of features. I'm just going to run through them top to bottom, and um, then I'm going to open the floor for questions, okay? So that you know what's happening and what's coming out next. So let me just start at the beginning, okay? The first one is we did a fix, the banner slider. There were guys on the, um, let me just, um, okay, I'll log in on this end, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the, it used to be if you tried to put an image up on the plumber site, it would sort of scale it down to the wrong size, and it, it was the wrong information it was giving for the width and the height, actually, and it would scale it down the image, and the image would look really strange, sort of stuck down here in the corner. You know, or on the other side, you know, when it shows up on the other side, you'd be stuck down here in the corner and way too small. Uh, that is now fixed. That's not a problem. And the image size is now the right size. So when you log in and look, and let me just do that, if I go to where that would be for the banner slider, and if I look, it's saying banner size should be about 350 pixels wide and 430 pixels high. Before it was saying some bizarre thing like 750 pixels wide, and that was actually what was causing the problem. Uh, so that's fixed now when we realized that this was the wrong information. People were putting in a size it was telling them to put in, but it was the wrong size. All right, that's funny. <laughs> well, anyway, that's a fix, and it's done. Now there's another one that came in that people asked about, and that's this. Um, the, the four images down here right below the banner header People were saying, this here would say, click here to find out more. You could click it. And this would say, click here to find out more. You could click it. And you could change the words to whatever you want in each case. You know, this could be, click here for the best coupons. You know, that could be, click here for some consultation. You could say whatever you want. Uh, but anyway, it used to be that only this is clickable. But we all know that a lot of people tend to click on the images, or they tend to click on the headers. 
And so we, of course, realized that it was, it was a mistake. And all three of these need to be clickable. All three of these need to be clickable. So we did that fix. That fix is done. So now you set it up the same way in the back. It looks the same. If we were to go to the global settings and go down to, go down to that four image boxes, it's the same thing. You know, here is the title, discount coupons. That would be exactly what this says, if that's what you wanted, discount coupons. Okay. Or make it anything. But there it is. It's box one, right? So there's the title. Here's the link. Uh, or the image, the image which you browse and select. That's it. You just browse and select it. Here's the read more text, and so it's, you know, what it physically says in words. And finally, here is that link that you wanted it to point to, which could be any link anywhere, you know, it, except it should be on the site. So with the slash, then it's like customer reviews, you know, which is one of your pages from the pages, or you're going to create it later, but it would be up in here somewhere. You make your page, right? Okay. So there's that. All right. Now, let me see. Along with that, some people were asking this right now. They said, how could we create multiple demos with it the way it is exactly right now? And the answer would be right now, there are a couple of ways to do it. Because right now, you cannot just save a whole build when you create a whole build and you want to save it. Um, there are a few ways to do it. One is, if you're doing a demo for someone and you're doing it for them and you set it up for whomever, Acme Plumbers, okay, in this area, fine, then when you set this demo up, go ahead and export the project, right, and put it up somewhere on your website. That's easy. You know, you can export it. You can stick it on your own website with FTP. You can use a URL. That way you can give it an exact URL. You could call it, like with a subdomain, you know, demo one dot. Your website would be the idea, right? And, yes, your website doesn't have to be ours. You can export this to your website, okay? Um, and you can make it like that, demo one. Except you wouldn't call it demo one. You would call it like Acme, you know, because that's it, right? That's your demo. Acme dash demo if you really want. You know, that way you can later do an Acme dot your website dot com separate from the demo. Whatever you want to do, but you can do that. And if you don't want to go that far with uh, subdomains because it's like too much work up front, then just make it your website dot com slash and then whatever you want. Acme. Acme dash demo. Okay. And if you do that, then when you export this thing, and then it's actually going to be right, you know, and that's cool, and it'll be done. Then you do another demo for another guy, whatever. That's one way to do it. What's another way to do it? And I'm just sitting here on the plumber side. This applies to everything, whether it's plumber, landscaper. The question is, how would you do a demo right now for a landscaper? Well, take a look at this. Here's a new thing that we did, too. This is one of the feature changes. We now have all of our templates happening in one spot. Okay, one admin panel. This is saying new combined dot theme to, you know, to html.com. New combined. Well, that's just, you know, for our demos. But take a look at this. We now have a themes icon. All of you have it. If you actually have this thing installed, you can go look and you will see it. And in your themes, when you click on it, you can choose the template you want. And right now you guys have three of them because the homeopathy one's being written out. So it feels like a homeopathy site when it arrives. Uh, that should be available Sunday sometime, maybe Monday, because Sunday's Super Bowl, right? So it might be Monday. Uh, but anyway, this is coming. Now, let me show you what's going on. Your back end doesn't have all of these buttons. This is the back end here. But your back end does have this install new theme and install theme. This whole section here with these two buttons, guess what that means? This is going to be cool. Because right now, here's where you stand. You have these choices that are here, and you can enable, disable any one of them with a click of a button. I just switched. I switched to my landscape. So if I refresh this, I am now on my landscape. I can work with this one. Okay. Then if I want to do a demo for a guy, I can do it like that. Then if I want to do a demo for a real estate guy, I can switch it for the real estate, right? And hop in and switch, and there I have the real estate one open. Yeah, same color scheme as the uh, the other one, but that's just cause. I mean, whatever color scheme you want, you can use. In any case, the point is very simply that you can switch back and forth as far as that goes. Now, what's the next part to it? The global variables. How do you do a demo for a company? 
Go into the global variables and ask the company, say you're on the phone with them right away. Say yes, you know, tell me a few things and you can make these changes in whatever order you want. You can even rearrange these in whatever order you want, right? You can export this and rearrange it in, in Excel and then import and it'll have the new rearrangement that you applied in Excel. That's an example of how to resort. Okay, but look, I can open a bunch of these at once, and I can just ask them all sorts of simple and useful questions, all right, and I could say, what is the name of your website, sir, you know, and they could say whatever it is, you know, Acme, right, uh, land.com, uh, fine, that would be the website title, and then what is the name of the thing, Acme Land, oh, I'm sorry, are we in the real estate or land or what, got to think about a real estate, okay, fine, so Acme Real Estate, right? So you can switch it. That's called Acme Real Estate. The owner is Bob Jones or whoever it is. Maybe it's Anna Smith. What do I know? Okay, Ann Smith is either the CEO or the owner. That's maybe what they want to be called. See, I can use these however I want, and I can do them very, very quickly. Uh, what kind of a credential? Well, like licensed. Maybe, I don't know about bonded, but licensed. You know, Maybe that's what they are. Uh, do they have an award? Yes, Small Business of the Year award or real estate. Uh, leader, you know, award, whatever that is, whatever it is, I can put them in. This is why I created all these different global variables anyway, and you can always add new ones to suit, right? And then when you get it done, just update them real quick. We should put an update all button, huh? Just to update all, like at once. But the point is, now that you make those changes, have the other person refresh the page, and suddenly all of this is talking specifically about them. In the bottom, it's saying Acme Real Estate. You know, you can point out all the things you want to point out, right? And we can go further with the demo, but the point is you can have their phone number update, like if their phone number was different. You can make it feel like them very, very quickly by just changing all this stuff. 239-444-9876, you know, update that. Flip back, refresh. All through the entire website, wherever the phone number is used on any page, right? Location, contact us. The phone number, whoops, the phone number will now be updated. It will be the correct phone number because that's what the whole global variables is for in the first place, right? And so you can demo that way, just flipping through the global variables and updating a bunch of information quickly and just letting them know it's a demo. Obviously, you have to put real time and work into it to make it look good for them, right? To make it their website. Okay. In the meantime, it's just demo stuff. By the way, anyone think, what if all this content, does it matter that it's a demo stuff with content in it from somewhere? No, it doesn't at all. Why? Because these demos, if you view the page source, the way this is right now, the demo is set not to index. It is telling Google, do not even see this page. Do not put it on Google. This is your working space. You don't want it to show up. It's not supposed to show up. Not this. Okay. Now, with that said, when you go to export the website, you get to choose whether you allow indexing or not. So yes or no. Well, usually yes, right? Because that way, when you export this or make it a zip file, maybe you can make the changes for the guy and he's happy, but he wants to put it on his own website. So just make a zip file, you know? Agni Real Estate, right? Dot zip. That's what it is, dot zip and then just export and it'll create the zip file on your computer then just email it to him and tell him to put it on his own website it's his thing now and even when you're zipping it you can put a URL if you need to make it a project folder particularly say he wants a subdomain right he'll set it up he knows what he's doing but he needs it for the Chicago area is just breaking into it Chicago dot you know Acme real estate or whatever it is okay and so you've got it. So when you create the zip file, all of the linkage throughout is set up properly for chicago.acmerealestate.com. So when he uploads and unzips, he'll upload and unzip it into chicago.acmerealestate.com. See? And there, and there it is. It works. If he's willing to give you FTP information, whoever it is, then yeah, here's the FTP server, ftp.acmerealestate.com, the FTP user and password, and the folder. You can even connect to his 
and select or create the folder so that you can have it be in here properly and upload and it will just go up for him or her right so that's kind of cool all right let me point out more okay and so far so good you guys are understanding what you're seeing here so far right because I'm, I'm just showing you a bunch of things at once where we are going is that you're going to be able to hit a single button for any one build like I don't know where yet but we're gonna have a button somewhere that says save this this um, I shouldn't call it a build because by build we kind of mean template maybe I should start using those terms differently and say a build means in this case not a template but specifically what you put all over it right the way you set it up a build would be what you did with your global variables, what you did with your website theme and colors, getting all the color schemes the way you want them, what you did with the testimonials page, what you did with the banner, what you did with the module settings, what you did with the left sidebar settings, whichever ones you wanted on top and next and down, save sorting, uh, what you did with all of these things together, every one of them, you want to be able to hit a single button that saves all of that work into a name that you create so that you can import it later or just select it from a list and two examples you know if it was importing in the case of global variables you would have exported as Excel in that case now you wouldn't do that with our build uh, but you would export a project and then you could import a project by in by choosing and importing right the other way that it could be done and probably the way we prefer is the same way we do it with website themes and colors. You know how we can load a style and switch our styles just by doing that, okay? And then just update and reload, and all of a sudden, our whole style is switched, right? Just all of a sudden, if I were to do that, then this whole thing switches to a blue, <laughs> right? And then um, if I switch to a new style, I preset and cut and got ready for me, you know, whatever style I wanted that to be. And I don't know, I, down, I just did a few to test them out, you know. Uh, the fact of the matter is, there you go, you could save them. Well, I think it would probably be great, and you guys can let me know if you think so too, uh, to be able to just save builds like that and upload a build. So if you are on the real estate template, then the builds you see are the ones for real estate. And if you switch to the, I don't know what, landscape template, then on here somewhere you could upload, you could choose from builds you saved for landscaping. Does that sound good? Does that sound like a good idea? Because so far I think that's pretty cool. And you guys, sounds like you guys are agreeing. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's how I'm going to present it. And this is probably the way we're going to build it in because that would be cool, right? Um, I got a question. How many of you guys think that, well, here, let me get to it. Themes, here's how it's going to be now. If you log into your user panel, for those of you who have one already, and you click on themes, like I said, you get this. It says install new theme. You can choose a file and install the theme. That is how easy it will be. When we give you or you buy or somebody sells or somebody else gives you any kind of a theme, like this homeopathy theme, when I'm through with it, I can download the theme. And when I download it, here's how this would go. Let me just kind of show you what I mean. It's happening right now. It's creating a zip file for that theme, okay? And I now have that zip file. It's sitting right here. I can send it to you or I can upload it somewhere. Properties, how big is it actually? It's like 6.84 meg, maybe a touch too big for email for some people, maybe not for others. But I could send this or put it somewhere you can download it. And then what? How do you install it? You just simply choose it, like from your desktop, okay? You would just choose it, WAP, and you would install it. Now, it doesn't matter in my case, because it's when it goes to, it's doing it now, it's uploading it, then it's going to install it, okay? And it's, guess what it says? Theme homeopathy is already installed. Yeah, duh. <laughs> it is, right? It's already installed. In your case, it'll say, Theme Homeopathy is now installed, and guess what? It'll appear in your list. And it'll be like this for all future things. Does that feel a little like WordPress or Drupal or Joomla or Weebly? I don't know which, because I never use any of them, like hardly at all. 
All I know is we're building this to be the way we want it to go. I've had people say, is this better than WordPress? Which should I choose, especially since WordPress is free? My answer is it's not a choice. It doesn't need to be at all. WordPress is great for WordPress purposes. If you want to use WordPress, use WordPress. I'm not saying don't. Uh, but there are a lot of things that are a pain in the neck about WordPress, and most of you guys who use WordPress know what they are. First, you physically have to install it, right? You have to clone and install. It's kind of a pain. Uh, in the case of this, if I want to install the website, I just extract the zip file into the right folder and boom, it's done. Or I upload it, boom, it's done. I don't need to go into the guy's panel and install anything like WordPress. I don't need to even install anything for email. That takes care of itself. By the way, the testimonials block will work the same way too uh, for exported websites. People add testimonials and you'll have a way, a place you can go. Uh, where you can turn them on or off, where you can approve them or not. They'll be off by default. You can turn them on. But you still don't need to install something to make that happen. It'll just happen when we export the project. The whole thing will suddenly work. As soon as it's uploaded somewhere where it's supposed to be uploaded, uh, it'll simply work. Okay. Same thing with the Contact Us forms. They work. Anyone ever have any trouble seeing the forms, by the way, just to point this out, like modules for the forms? I had somebody ask me today, he goes, all I see is this. I cannot see this whole square here for the email body. I can't see any of it. I can only see the email subject and then the next email subject. And that's because he was on Internet Explorer, most likely. If you go on Firefox or Chrome, it should look right, okay, as far as that goes. All right, let me get back because I want to get through my list here. i got a few things on my list. Let me see. All right, so banner slider image size is done. Four boxes banner slider below so that all of it's clickable. Yes, that's done. Uh, made all the templates work from a single admin panel. That's done. It's much easier to manage. You don't need multiple passes, multiple links, multiple logins. You just do it all in one panel. So that's much nicer. All right, need to be able to change the submission form background colors. That's done. If you go to global settings, website theme and colors, there is a new one down there which is called schedule service form background. That means you can change that independent of the colors on the site. So if I want to make this some other color like even a even a like a really dark brown like that, okay? I can update, reload, go take a look. And guess what? This is completely separate. Now the submit now button is still green. Um, if we want to have that change with this, that's great. Right now it's kind of cool if it's a different color so it stands out, obviously. Um, but we should do something with that to make it more obvious anyway as a button for submit now. No one's confused by it. It makes perfect sense to everyone so far. Um, but that that's a different color that we might want to edit too. And so, you know, that should be involved. So we'll do something for that. Either that will go with this uh, or it will be a second color besides it. Now another thing you're going to see back here that's new, that's cool, people have been asking. Uh, let me see, let me flip back to a different theme real quick. Okay, In the case of Plumber, okay, I made this point earlier, we have a background image. It could be any image you want. Okay, And then in the case of the homeopathy, okay, flip, okay, same thing now. We have a background image. So this is a very different image, right? The plumber image is really just a small square that's repeating over and over again, right? That's why it works. It's repeating X and repeating Y to fill the whole page. And because the pattern is a very simple pattern, then it just repeats all the way throughout the page. It's a piece of cake. Now, um, in the case of this, we don't have a repeating pattern. We just have something we aligned across the top. Okay? So that image is kind of small in a way. Okay? It's, it's hard to see, but it's this block here that is not shaded. It goes all the way across. It's just an image like that. I wonder if I can just, um, uh, well, I can't do it like that. I could do it a different way. But instead of going haywire trying to show you what I want to show you, let me just make the point. Okay, Take a look in here, website themes and colors. Okay, Here's how it works. You can set the page background color to whatever you want. In the case of this image being here, it would be nice to set the background color to work with the image, so we did. We, you, know, you can use something like a color picker. For those of you who don't know, you can go get a color picker 
that, I think it's even like colorpicker.com, it's a free one. And when you hover over a color, it will tell you up here the exact name of the color in this block. It's so hard to see because it's trying to see what I'm doing anyway. But if I hover here, it says F2EE2. See it? F2EE2. -E right, because that is the background color and it jives with this. Okay. That's what this is, F2EEE2. -E -E okay. So my color picker told me exactly what color to type in here. I didn't have to select it. I just typed the number in, and I got the perfect color. Then I just uploaded the image I wanted, and it's great to use a PNG image for transparency, right, so that wherever there's not information, then the background sticks through. You know, the background bleeds through. So wherever there's not information for an image, the background beats through. And I even did that with this logo here. I made a PNG logo and knocked out section, so I had holes in it. So <laughs> that way, wherever the holes are, the background bleeds through. And I just wanted that. I mean, you can do whatever you want with imagery and stuff, depending on what you feel like doing. All right. So anyway, how do you handle that image? I mean, why isn't it down here or at the bottom? Because of the way we chose to orient it. Okay. Horizontal position, center, left, or right, maybe the center. Vertical position, top, bottom, or middle. We said top. What if I put it at the bottom? Okay, and I, I can see, I mean, I haven't actually done this. I'll just see if it looks okay. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, it's, yeah, completely at the bottom of the whole web page. <laughs> it's absolutely down here. What if I put it in the middle? You know, just so I can understand. Vertical position, middle, you know. But that's how this works, right? You can literally put any image. So you can do a repeating image. Or if not a repeating image, uh, you can do an image that's meant to be centered at the top or in the middle or whatever it is that fits your interests. So you can upload a big image or a small one and then put it wherever you want it to go. And then you can decide if it wants to repeat or not. You can repeat it horizontally or repeat it vertically or repeat, which really means both, okay? Update and reload. If I do that, then my image should, like, repeat all the way down. And it does. It repeats all the way down. Okay. Now, it doesn't look right with an image like this because it has a very, you know, clear top, right? It doesn't fade back out at the top. Okay. So that wouldn't make sense with this image, really. It looks weird. Uh, but nonetheless, that's the point is that depending on your image uses and desires, you can absolutely do this. Okay. So that makes for much better control. In the case of the plumber template, repeating made perfect sense and it looked right to repeat all the way down the page and all the way across the page, right? So that's what's there now. Okay, let me see what comes next because there's more stuff I want to talk about. Add background colors to the room, review the value of PNG files. Yeah, I think I did. Dot .png, that's the point. If you save your files as dot .png, you can knock backgrounds out of your files and everything uh, will bleed through that way. So it looks better, okay? That, by the way, that, by the way, is why this works. For those of you that just didn't really know, plumber, okay? All right, if I flip back here and refresh and I see my plumber, here's the question. How do you get this guy to stand here like this and everything around him is blue? I mean, do you really think he came, that I found a picture this exact shape somewhere? No, of course not. This picture is a square. It's just that I knocked out all of the image information around this shape. And then I reached into here and knocked out the image information in that shape and knocked out the image information in that shape. Same thing with this guy. This is a square picture. But then I knocked all the image information out from wherever I didn't want it. And so what that left was just image information with an empty space surrounding it. That's a square. So now when I uploaded it, the background bleeds wherever there is no image information. If you don't know how that works, maybe do a Google search on that, creating um, PNG uh, files, knockout background, something like that. Who knows? You know, and you'll go see how it's done. You need a tool like Photoshop to do it or a tool like, um, I forget what it's called, maybe paint.net, I think I heard. Except be careful. Do not go to paint.net. I went to a site called paint.net, and it's got a virus on it. So look this up on Google. And the first thing it will tell you is don't go to paint.net somewhere in here. 
but there's other stuff. There's like getpaint.net, and it's free. And you can open that, and you can use the magic wand tool or whatever to draw the line around what you want to keep, and then knock the image information out of on out of, you know off of one side of the line, right? That way you have holes, right, wherever the image information is not. It's actually easier to do than you imagine. Maybe I'll do a separate session on that sometime and just show you guys how it's done. But it's not like it's hard, really. It's really not hard. Um, what else? There's more. <laughs> I want to make sure I cover all this stuff. It's important. Let me see. In the banner slider operate in a better manner. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for those of you that may have caught on to it, we actually thought that this whole thing about knocking out images is sort of a pain, right? Because it is sort of a pain. So on our newer builds, we went with a whole different concept. We said people just want to be able to upload an image. Whoops. And that's it. Well, there we go. How's this? Nicer, cleaner. Make it read the way you want, have the image in the background, and there you go. And that way you don't have to knock anything out. The image just fills the background for you. Okay? And that is cool, right? And again, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want that crazy brown for the uh, schedule form, so you might change it to something more like your green up here. If I just want to match it, I'll just copy some other color and match it, you know, update and reload, and that way it'll match everything else. Okay? There you go. All right, so anyway, there you have it. And so now you just put the images in, and our header stands out nicely, and our description and our links stand out nicely. And, of course, that's as easy as it has always been. From the dashboard, go to the banner slider. That's, like I said, even easier because your images don't have to have knocked out backgrounds. Click on one. What do you need? The title. Let's make your yard extraordinary. The description. Whatever you want people to understand, first thing. Okay, The banner link text, like click here for our services. So when we look at this, okay, there's our header. Let's make your yard extraordinary. Our description. Whoops. And then, let me get back. And then the link text itself says click here for our services. And when you hover over it, you can click and go to the page. Okay, And that's what it is. Here's the link. That's the page itself, banner link. And, and the banner image is that image. And, of course, that's the text up here, banner link text, right, for the words that you're going to use. Uh, can you use global variables for this? Yes. Uh, let, instead of saying, let's make your yard extraordinary, you could say something like, let company make your yard extraordinary. And then whatever was being used on the company variable, right? Um, here. Let South Bend Landscaping make your yard extraordinary. Now, in this case, it's just too big. It's not supposed to be that big. But um, there you go. I mean, there's the idea. I could use shorthand, you know, S, uh, SBL, Inc., you know, South Bend Landscaping, whatever makes sense there. Point is you can use variables. If you forget a variable, hit global variables. It shows all your variables up here, okay? And you can just scroll down and find a variable that makes sense. Maybe Bob Jones, the owner, makes sense, so I'll copy. And I can just paste that in over what I wanted, Control-V maybe. And then there's a space. So I'll let Bob Jones make your yard extraordinary, right? You know? Let Bob Jones make your yard extraordinary. Again, might be a little more than I want, but whatever. <laughs> Just letting you know what's possible. Let us works in this case, okay? Make your yard extraordinary. And yeah, you can flip this open, and you can flip it shut again. Piece of cake. And that works like all throughout this entire thing, right? So you can do it in many sections. In this section, in that section, and in that section, obviously. In this section, in that section. It works in this section. In that section, those global variables work all throughout, so it's very, very cool. All right, let me give you another one. Upcoming, okay, spinner. How many of you guys would like to see a spinner for this thing? Wouldn't that be cool? So you can spin unique versions of pages um, without having to go find new words necessarily. All you want is just to spin it. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. We're almost done implementing it. We have the functions working already, we just have to integrate it. And so the question came, how to integrate it in a sensible way. Let me tell you what we have in mind, because this is probably how we're going to do it. If you go to edit any page, OK, 
Okay. This, of course, is the page content. This is where the wording would come from. So it would start as just a regular article. You wouldn't necessarily bother to put um, all the linkage and stuff in here yet. The assumption is you're starting with some page. Okay. And then, of course, you can doctor it up and make it all you want. Uh, if you have tokens, it's fine because the spinner will just work around tokens. It doesn't know what they are anyway. So it just assumes there are no variables for them. right? But what's the point? We're going to have buttons over here. One of them's going to say something like create spun version of the article. That'll be this thing that's in here. Okay, whatever it is. So it'll create a spun version and just put it in here. Okay, that's one idea. So you can just save it. You can doctor it, obviously, all you want. You know, just to double check through the word and go through and clean it up. And when we do the spun version, We'll make sure to have the little readout that tells you the percentage of differentiation from the original so you know just how different it is. If it doesn't feel different enough, just hit the button again, and it'll spin it again and tell you the percentage of differentiation. So as long as it's a high percentage and you generally like the way it reads and you can just go through and clean it up, just hand type all over it on, you know, and just make it perfect, then you can save it and you have your spun version that's at least 98 or 99 percent different than the original. Okay, that'll be nice and you can do it page by page. Another one will be um, get the spin tax version if you really want the spin tax version. Right now we think we're going to want to add that uh, specifically so we can incorporate with Moji. At least that's our original purpose. You can do otherwise. But you guys know the functionality exists. How many of you already know that in the Moji toolbar you can import and convert from spinner syntax. So you can copy in a spun article in here, and you can hit convert from, and it spreads it out and makes it bar sheet format. Okay, And of course, your index page itself comes right from the build anyway. So when you're done with the spun version, update and reload, you go to export this with a spun version, um, whatever you can use moji to, to replace the content on the page and it's ready for spinning thousands of pages right you have the perfect html page is my point and you have the perfect bar sheet and they're already integrated so we will be finding better ways to integrate moji with this directly for those who have moji you do not have to have moji to have this right it will work with or without moji uh, but that is something we want to integrate. Same thing, if you don't have a spinner account, it will work with or without the spinner. But for those who want the spinner, the spinner will be done probably Tuesday, maybe Monday. Um, but we are so close, and the only reason it's not happening now is the weekend and Super Bowl and everything's in the way. <laughs> but it will be done almost certainly by Tuesday night, and you'll be able to enter your spinner credentials. Obviously, the first one we're doing is what? It's spin rewriter, but get it from here, please, if you would. That's just that's just you supporting us. You know, you got emoji. It costs you the same either way. It's just a little tiny favor you can do to help us out. That's the emoji resources page. <clears throat> and if you go there, get the spinner recommendation right here. See the spinner here? And if you go here and you decide to get it, it's not expensive. It's nice. Get it, and you're going to like it. We like it. All of us like it. It's really been a godsend, and it's just great. Okay, so that's our biggest one that we're doing now. And by the way, that's the idea here, but there's one more to it. Okay, if I go back to pages, see I edited it. If I hit the preview window, because I'm logged in, see how it can say edit page? Well, we thought it would be easier to see your spun versions on the page if you have a button here that says generate spun version. Get it? And so we'll have generate spun version and maybe also generate spin text version both here, if you get that, right? Haha, <laughs> Ron. <laughs> yeah, everyone's looking forward to the game. Can't wait. And we'll see who's who after this game. I love the way the last game went for Seattle. That was awesome. It was so great. The whole thwack the ball. <laughs> and everyone was doing, you know, cat, showing every funny cat YouTube video with a cat leaping up and thwacking the ball, you know, away from the dog or another cat or whatever. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> mm. All right. So let me see what else I'm going to, oh yeah, there's another big thing we're going to do. There's a couple of them anyway. We are going to open the floor for T2H developers soon. 
Why? Because we realize that we cannot generate um, um, templates as fast as you want them. Okay. I mean, we got four in here. They take a while to do. They really do. I mean, it's a lot of work going through and finding the right content, updating the testimonials, getting the pages lined up, getting everything done from scratch, right? Uh, and making it generic. I mean, if I knew which homeopathy client I was doing this for, that would be simple. Because I could, if I flip on homeopathy and started doing a job, and let me give you an idea. I go to pages, right? I've got all these pages. I can flip them on or off, okay? I can make duplicates of any of them. Okay, then the question is, can I take a client, and here's one, and hands off of her, because I've used her forever, and you guys know this is not your girl, this is mine, <laughs> right here. This lady could use a new site. Now, I haven't mentioned it to her yet, because I actually know she's traveling, she's down in Florida doing these other things, seminars and stuff. She's from Wisconsin. But when she gets back, I'm going to ask her if she'd like a website that looks a lot more like, you know, like this, Okay. And by the way, I'm going to flip that image backwards. You guys know how to do that? You can do it in Photoshop. You can probably do it in Paint.net where you say flip the image. And now the wording comes out over here, but I got the image on the right. And I actually already did it somewhere else. Um, if you look here, just to show you, see, the image is flipped. So it looks a lot better like this. Now the reality check is I could just put it in a different order too, right? Um, just to point that out. So if I went to my banner slider and I said, well, it's flipped this way, so let me just flip the order, save the sorting, then that'll work. Because now when I flip it, it's going to show a different image first, and then guess what the next image is going to be. But because of the way we orient this to go back and forth so it doesn't get boring at all, then look at that. See? Now that fits, right? It just looks right, doesn't it? So, you know, you can do whatever you want with these. But when I go showing her this, I'm going to put her logo in there for my demo. I'm going to grab her logo and stick it up here. Her round, she's got one here. I'm going to put that. And if she doesn't have it, I'm going to cut this image out, <laughs> you know, on on a paint, on a image editor. And I'm just going to straight upload it, right, so it shows up. I might even make it a transparent background. I'll just decide if I want to. I'll knock the image info out maybe right around the bird here, okay, something like that. Okay, and then what am I going to do? I'm going to take content from her pages, and I am straight going to decide how many pages I want. Short dash overview dot html piece of cake, allopathic dash medicine dot html piece of cake. I'll copy and paste that stuff in there. Remedies dot html, and I'll copy and paste that stuff in there, and make whatever I want in the headers. And I just do it page by page, real fast. I just go into the pages and rename some of them, and um, turn off the ones I don't need and copy over them, or I'll just duplicate them if I want to keep my generic version here. I want to keep my generic version, so I'll make duplicates and turn off the originals and then take the ones I duplicated and change them the way I want real quick. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Then I'll just go, like I said, the logo, and I'll go into the global variables, and I'll change it, man. It'll be her company name, her name, her name, da 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 da, da her phone number, and everything else, right? By the time I'm done, guess what? Um, I'm going to be able to just show her real fast, you know, and it'll have all her stuff. And if I really wanted to, I could take a snapshot of this, you know, take my Snagit and take a picture all the way down and just email it to her as an image in an email and just say, hey, I could really do something nice with your site. What do you think of this? If you like it, let me know. And I mean, I could do that for people I've never heard of before. I have people say, how easy is it to find crappy homeopathy sites? Anyone want to take a wild guess? You know, we were looking up like homeopathy. Let me just try to get this right. You know, let me just homeopathy uh, like Indiana, <laughs> just to give you an idea how this goes. And we started looking not for directories like this, but just individual mom and pop people. And there's our Krista voice says just populating. Uh, but let's get past her for a minute so I can just plant some other people. We started opening things that look like people, right? Just regular people, you know? Um, Hpathy.com may or may not be. But we just started opening some. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We always assume that the guys on the first page don't need us, so I don't even need to point those out. That, maybe the page is nice. Maybe it isn't. But I could always ask them what they think. You know, if they're not doing well with their page, your page looks good. It looks like the glass is half full, not half empty. If people feel like their website's not making them any money, 
then they start to see your site as being a much better thing, a much better layout, easier to read, easier to see the point, easier to get right to the section you need, right? Your website looks like the glass is half full compared to their website, which they'd always hoped made them money, but it's not working, okay? A lot of people blame their site when they're not making money. But now that I'm on page four, how hard do you think it would be just to find a few guys who look like, you know, and I don't know who's who on here. I'll just open a bunch of pages and take looks at them, you know? What the heck? I'll open that one. I'll open that one. I'll open this one. I'll open that one. I'll just find some that look like garbage, you know? How hard can it be, you know? You know, and just what do you think? Kind of garbage, right? That's garbage. This is garbage, you know? Now, maybe he still wants this site, but I can create him a second site, and he can backlink it with this site or backlink this site with the other one. But I can give him a separate face that looks better. And he could just put it in a section of this website. This, after all, is some page. You know, who knows what's here? I don't even know. All right. This is, like, bigger anyway, but whatever. Uh, let me see what's next. This. People listen. This doesn't look good like a homeopathy site. I don't even like the gray, right? How's the gray supposed to work? Now, maybe somebody finds this is useful. And what's with this Toyota ad? Does that really make sense? Who coming to a homeopathy website is interested in a Toyota ad? I don't know. Put it there. Look at this. It's a broken image. There's supposed to be an image here, and it's not even here, right? I, I don't get why I would read all this. I don't even know who I'm looking for. I don't know what their services are. I'm just kind of reading about them without knowing why I'm here. That's why this makes more sense. I can say why you're here really quickly. And not just that, I can show you what you might be interested in really quickly. And you can contact me right away. And you can call me and you know when I'm open. You know, and I could put an extra line at the bottom saying serving the greater area. Watch this. How many of you didn't know how easy it is to do any of this kind of thing? Call us header text. To make an appointment call, and it's got the phone is header one. So this is paragraph. It's normal. This is header one. Watch this. Serving the greater city area. You know, I could even go city state, right? Uh, long state or short state, right? Long state. Area. Since, and I'll do like the beginning year, but I forget what it's called, so I'll open my global variables and look for my beginning year. It's a year, so I'll just look for a year right there. Big, this is the one, so I'll copy that and put it here. Control V. Get it? And I can update it. Now, that way. See that? Serving the greater South Bend, Indiana area since 1987. Now, maybe that's just a bit too much, so I'll just bring it back slightly. But I'll just say serving, you know, serving the South Bend, Indiana, or serving South Bend, Indiana, okay? You know, because that means the surrounding area, probably. But there you go. I can make it fit anyway. Or I could take off the since if I want to. But there you go. Serving South Bend, Indiana since 1987. Ain't that cool? Looks nice, doesn't it? That's the kind of idea. And that's because it's the variables, man. So whatever I put in for when they started operations, I could ask them. Or I could see on their website and just put it in and show them the demo. You know how fast somebody will pay you 200 300 400 500 bucks just to copy the stuff from their yucky-looking website? You know, whatever it is that they have, they give you the content. You're not supposed to know it. They give it to you. You just make it look nicer by putting it in the pages that make this kind of an effect and go grab some images from Google Images and pump them in here if they don't have images for you. And if it's all about people, guess what? This is person one, person two, person three, and person four, right? So let me make that point. Some of these sites will look nice. This is person three, what? Let me see, person one, person two, person three. And whatever I want to say for four, you know, I'll find something else to put there, right? Very easily. Maybe even person four. Ah, person four. Look at that. That's a person four right there. Okay? So that would be these, right? Literally with their names. Okay? It would say Susan Clearwater. It would say Beth Moses. I would have it do that. There's one of these would be Susan Clearwater. Another one would be Beth Moses. And that'll be their images. And click here to find out more about them, right? That'll be it. 
Now, and then up here it's making the point about why you want to read about them in the first place. Otherwise, you wouldn't know why you're going to start reading the page. Okay, Ain't that cool? I mean, people will drop money for you just to do that and then zip it up and send it to them. They can take over their own hosting. They can host it somewhere. And otherwise, if they don't know how, they'll pay you a fee to take care of it. They'll pay for the hosting, and they'll pay you 50 bucks or something to upload it and set it up for them. You get it? And, I mean, you can do that. It's easy, okay? Now, if you have a plan with WordPress that's making you money, WordPress is great. If you want another plan with this that makes you money, this is great. I, frankly, see how to make money with this, and I see how to make it continue to make more money, and I see how to make this thing cool and make it more cool. That's why I like this. T to H is just worth a plan to you if you see the value in it, if you see what you want to do with it. Okay, That's what that is. Let me see what else. Like I was saying, we have people who want to create templates, and I am going to be asking for content writers, those of you who are, one, native English speakers, Two, you are good at writing. You can, you know, at least you can recognize reasonable print, right? Reasonable either pitchiness or general article writing. Uh, you generally can spell well. Uh, you, and, you know, you can find general content or hammer out general content pretty quickly, okay? And um, if you find T to H pretty easy to use, if you understand how to do it, you can go, you can get to the pages, you can start on this page, and you can go find content to paste in here and separate out titles from paragraphs. So if it all came like one big thing like this, okay, and it's not showing the right print, you try to change it to something like normal or heading one, and the whole thing might look funky. How do you deal with it? You back it up, drop it down, and that created a line break which separates them, and now it looks right. Okay, And that's all you need because when you create your heading one, paragraph, your heading twos, you know, whatever's in there for like heading two or else that's bolded. That shouldn't be bolded. It should be heading two. Okay, like that. Uh-oh. And you say, well, how did that affect everything? Piece of cake. Again, take out the line spacing and recreate it. And then that way you can make that normal and it'll look perfectly fine. Now remember, it doesn't look like this on the page because there it's all going to be all of these Styles are overwritten by the master style, right? Your global settings, website theme and colors, whatever you want it for your heading one styles, your font, color, size, whether you want it bolded or not, whether you want it italicized or not, okay? However you want it to roll on your site, it's controlled really by here, and that controls all of it, okay? So that's cool. That's why the pages look right down here. That's why this looks this way. Even though in the editor, it looks very plain, it doesn't matter. This is an H1 tag. This is an H2 tag. This is paragraph font. So it's following the website themes and colors for the H1 tag, the H2 tag, and the paragraph font. Okay. There you go. Now, what else? Um... We are going to do, like I said, direct incorporation with Moji. We're going to get that going on. But, oh, yeah, modules. I, we've had a lot of requests for modules. Module, how does that work, by the way? If we go to modules, okay, we've got modules, okay, and you can create like a schedule form, book appointment, testimonials, contact us. We're going to make it possible to add a module, and there is such a thing already. And when you create a module, you give it a title, and when you give it a title, you also put, to put some kind of custom HTML element into it, whatever is useful, coding, code snippets, whatever. So you can create your own modules and put them up, and they can be made available in the mainframe. Everyone can get access to them. And we can even make a page where some are sellable, okay, where you can sell them or where you can pitch your add-on, your module. And that can become part of it. Same thing with templates. You can pitch your templates. If you want to put time and effort into templates, you can charge some kind of thing for it. And so it can go on a page where people can just look at it. You guys know how that goes already, right? There's something called Moji Templates is one example, right? Or isn't that right? And I haven't followed this in a while, but this guy likes to create his own templates, okay, with his own designs, right? And you can go to his store and you can buy templates he set up that work for you, right? And there's just different things, whatever it was he put, I don't know what he put, but he had a few, 
and so there might be more. And um, I haven't seen what he's done in a while, but the fact of the matter is there's more guys doing things like this too. There are guys here and there that have different things that are useful. Well, that's going to happen with T to H, kind of like the WordPress add-on marketplace. You know, There's going to be something like that for this, just simple little add-ons for simple little amounts of money. But the point is that this will grow at a very fast rate if people want to leap in and get involved and create stuff for the public, right? And that'll be neat because then we could have 10 templates a day showing up, right, covering every industry. I mean, there's hundreds of industries. We could create hundreds of pre-cut templates and different designs for the templates. They don't all have to be this one design. We like this design because it's convertible, but it's not the only convertible design. So there's no reason why we can't make it possible for people to create other designs that can be made available through here, and you can import those new designs. You can buy it or get it as a gift or whatever the guy's willing to trade or sell it or trade, you know, rent it to you for whatever. I don't know about rent. It won't be any renting. It'll either be buy or trade or something, or he'll just give it away free, and you'll be able to install it and install it and switch to it and use it. It's just going to be possible for other people to create these things and you'll be able to get it okay and put it in yours mm. same with modules that do different things okay people are asking for modules that do different things guys have real estate modules MLS listings and stuff like that I think it's MLS um, and you know can you create functions that work on the web pages by including them yeah how do you create a module how do you put a module on a web page let me just show you here's how it works in case you're wondering uh, if I find like um, there's got to be a the review module in here somewhere, and if I don't, ah, yeah, testimonials. See this? It says testimonials. Here's the link for it that we gave, and this says testimonials for the module. The module says testimonials, right? So if I click on it, I can see how it works. It's a normal page with a menu link. It is because it's how it works here. There is a normal menu link here, and it's a normal page. But see, see how it works? Here's why. We gave it the name, reviews.html. The parent page is the root page. That's why it's way over here. If I wanted to put it under something like About Us, I could. I could switch this to About Us, Update and Reload. And if I flip back and refresh, it is now under About Us. Okay? Got it? I don't need to. I'm just saying. You can. Okay? Update and Reload. Let me put it back. Okay? The name I give it was reviews.html. And what is this? This is all you need to know to make the module work because the module has a name. The name is testimonials. Just put it in the curly brackets. You guys in your panels, you can see this. Just by putting it there, it works. Does that mean that we can also add it to any page or can we add something else to the pages? What about these other modules? What about like the contact us? This has a name somewhere in here. I forget what it's called. But look, if I go back to my pages and I go to my home page, for example, say at the bottom of the page or somewhere in the page, maybe in the middle, I don't know, I want to put that contact us form. How do I do it? I just do it. Curly bracket. Should be caps and it should be something like contact us. I'll find this list somewhere and put it up. And hit update and reload. That might be it. So now if I go to the home page, and scroll down. Whoops. Okay, that's not it because it's it's there is print. So I'm off by something. I'm not sure what. Might be that simple. Contact, right? Again, I gotta find that name. But then the point is all of a sudden it'll just turn on. Okay, that's not it either. Oh, don't you hate that? I don't think it can be two words, but it might have a dash, right? That's just it. I gotta go look it up. Um and make sure that list is obvious to you guys. But anyway, whatever it is. Um, then it would just simply work. It would show up in here and be perfectly useful. Okay, maybe it's contact form. <laughs> well, one of you guys are going to figure it out before me. Watch. <laughs> All right, whatever. Nah, that's not it either. Anyway, that's oh, that's why. Hold on, I'm forgetting the other part. I think it is contact us, but here's why. I have to turn it on. See the modules on this page. I need to go to it. There it is. So I need both that and that. Update and reload. That might be it. Yeah, there it is. See? 
Now, I don't see why I'd put it right in the middle of the page like that, but this is how you turn modules off and on. So what if developers are creating modules and putting them out there, and you can stick them into any page that makes sense? If you're doing something having to do with homeopathy, you can put in a module that has to do with homeopathy, like look up, you know, maybe it's, it's coding that goes to the main directory where you can look up which kind of homeopathic pill you want to take for something. If it's on the real estate site, if you flip to that, then you can add the module that acts, you know, that acts like your search for a home in your area. And you can, somebody can build that, and you could turn that one on on your page. If you want to take it off, just take it off. Break the link, you know, maybe get rid of the extra space, uh, up to you. And I'll go back to none for the modules, okay? Update and reload. There you are, okay? Mm. If the print doesn't look quite right, I'll just go back and fix it. I mean, if it doesn't look right, there's just whatever reason it doesn't look right, I'll go back and fix it. See how it's different from the rest and fix it. Piece of cake. Uh, sometimes you accidentally got like two bits of coding in there once in a long while, and the question becomes, how do you deal with that? Maybe a simple way to deal with that. There's a couple of them. One is go to the source code and find it, and sometimes you just see what you did. You accidentally put in two bits of code at the same time, and so you can just kill the internal code, like the span or whatever it is, you know. And you may not need the strong because this is an H1 type, so I can just get rid of that. That's if you're familiar with coding. Okay. And another way to do it, if you're just not familiar enough to do this, because you don't need to do this, it's just I can do it easily. Okay. But another way to do it is just take the print you desire, copy it to a notepad text, right? Like this. That gets all the font information out. That way I can delete like everything here. Okay. Let me just like delete the whole thing, you know. And then um, that way I can just start. Now I can select all, copy, and just paste it into the page. Bap. And that should actually be fine now. It should have the right information, right? And that's the point. So anyway, what do I know? Update and reload. Okay, what else though? Let me see. Okay, because that's easy enough to deal with. What else? Anything else? Testimonial block. Admin section for users. Yeah, testimonials are going to work for people when you export and put on somebody else's website. They can deal with the testimonials without needing some kind of an admin panel to do it. They'll just have a place they can go to approve or disapprove the testimonials one after the next. That'll be cool. Um, I will be looking for content developers, and you'll get paid or you'll get software. You know, if you want to be a content developer. Uh, so if you are a native English speaker and you are um, good at English, pretty good at English, you can do this kind of, and you understand how to do this sort of copying and pasting and rearranging of headers and stuff inside T to H, you're pretty comfortable with that, let me know, I will probably have work for you, because as people, if, if we want more templates faster for more industries, and I think everyone does, uh, so far that's exactly the way it's coming out, um, then we want people who can pound out uh, the content for these things, all right, pretty quickly, because that's the biggest holdup. Um, I do. If guys are making templates and other guys are whipping the content into them, that streamlines the work and makes the stuff appear faster and faster for different industries. I've had requests for everything, general contractor, kitchen remodeling, okay? You name it. We can do, we can do templates for anything, all right? We just also could use people doing content. <laughs> and so that's a cool little job. All right. Let me see. All right, up down the distributable version, that is the next thing after the API. And so after we're done with the API, then we do the distributable. And then after we get the distributable done, we need to incorporate a button for automatic updates. So that like right now you can hit to help and support for the reasons you would hit that. Okay, help and support. We need another button called check for updates. You just hit it. If there's an update, then it'll download, install, and run it, and maybe it'll say sign out, sign back in, or something like that, close your browser, whatever. And then when you're done, it'll be the new version. Like right now, it seemed almost like magic if you guys logged in and hit themes, and for the first time you saw this install new theme and it had these buttons. That's because we did that on your installation, right? Pretty soon there will be a check for updates button where you just hit that and it does it by itself, okay? So that'll be pretty cool. Um, all right, that's that for the uh, distributable version. Is there, um, yeah, other questions? You know what? I'm going to call five, and let's take a quick break.
Okay, and please help me with this. I'm going to hit stop recording <laughs> so we don't record five minutes of silence. When we get back, you guys shout at me to remember to turn recording back on. Please, please, please. The last uh, webinar didn't recording did not go up because I forgot to hit that button. Um, anyway, and then that way you can get your heads clear for a bit, come back and start asking questions. I want to know questions you have, okay, because that's cool, and we'll go through them. All right, so I shall see you back here very, very shortly. I'm going to stop the recording. Don't forget to remind me, and let's take about five, and then we'll come back. All right, thanks for coming, guys. In the meantime, those of you who need to break off, go ahead, and don't worry. I'll get the recording out. <laughs> those of you who've got questions, I've got all the time in the world for you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> now I got it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, now it's recording again for sure. All right, you guys got any particular questions, or do you want to talk about something in particular? Do you want to see something done? Uh, like a way of doing something guys let me know what you want if you want I can turn you on and you can chat at this point you just let me know and just say uh, me if you have a question I'll just go through you uh, top to bottom so let me know if you have a particular question and yeah just let me know type me or something like that that's cool and aside from that yeah, don't raise hands it's like some of you guys are raising hands but I don't know how to read that <laughs> <laughs> just put something in the chat box, in the questions box, you know, that says me or whatever your question is. Just type it in. In the meantime, maybe I'll just do something for the fun of it like, while I'm waiting for some more. Okay, there we go. Now we're starting to get more questions. Uh... Yes, exactly. Um, there is no reason why you're stuck with any of the template. Does, uh, just because we do these pre-cut templates and give them names does not mean that you're stuck with those templates for some reason, okay? Hey, take a look. I call this, you know, um, which, whichever it is still, I forget. This is the homeopathy template. It's still saying best landscaping company because we started by copying the other one and starting to develop upon it. How hard is it to make a template work for any industry anyway? Well, change the image, right? Change the background color and the color scheme. Okay. Change the logo. Type in different names for the pages that fit. Like, what is homeopathy becomes something else. You know, what is um, you're doing uh, like Kumon. You know, then it's what is Kumon. You know, or where can you find locations and everything else, right? About us and so on. You come down here and you can have points about this. Can be about math improvement, like for Kumon, right? This can be about uh, reading improvement, reading comprehension, um, uh, logic. You know, and that, that can be your image for your math, an image for your reading comprehension, you know, your reading, your logic, whatever, and click here to find out more, right? Uh, you could say something like, we improve your this, we improve your that, and that's what this banner's for up here. You can have pictures, you know, I'm thinking Kumon because I got a question from a guy who does that. And you can have your pictures for your Kumon kids' education, right? And again, the slider works, and you can make your points in here, and these can go to the individual pages for the services. So you can have an image of improving your reading comprehension if that's a topic. And this can be click here for, you know, whatever, reading comprehension, you know, and that would also be maybe one of these pages if you want. Okay. And then you can just edit the page. You guys know that whenever you're logged into the system, the edit page button shows up. Okay, that's when you're logged in. All right, you can edit the page. Okay. And when you are not logged in, if I sign out and go back and refresh, there is no edit the page button anymore, right? You know, I'm seeing it the way somebody from the outside sees it. But for those of us who are logged in, right, let me refresh anyway and get back in, okay, right? Now when I refresh, I am logged in, and I can edit the page, right? So I can keep going back and forth to this page very quickly. When I hit it, it goes right here. So I can just keep right on going with it, right? Now, what else? I mean, anything you want it to be. You can change the video link if you have a video, a YouTube video. If you don't, turn it off in the left sidebar. You can disable your YouTube video if you do not have one. Okay? Flip, and it's gone. Everything else rolls up. Okay? Then you want to change the order of events. Maybe you want the testimonials at the top. Just do it. Grab testimonials, pull it to the top, hit save sorting. Right? And there you have it. It's at the top now. Okay? What do you want to do? And you can say whatever you want to say. You can change the image for the testimonials and everything. Go to 
that client testimonial section, and there you go. Everything is editable. What image do you want? Upload it from your computer if you, if you don't already have it on the server and just select it. What do you want it to say? Just decide. This is a heading two line. This is normal for normal print. This is normal print, but italicized, and the color's been changed, so it looks a little, you know, more subtle. Then I just stuck in some words and then highlighted them. So I could hit the link button and create the link to whatever page I wanted and hit OK. And it could go off the website. You could just do an HTTP and go completely off the website with your links. Okay. In this case, I want it on the website. Okay. And hit Update. And that's all you had to do to make this whole thing exist, this whole client testimonial section. Okay. That's how it works. It's so easy, you know, to manipulate this way. And it's true HTML. People would say this, doesn't WordPress outrank HTML? You guys should know better than that. Any question like that, you can put to the test. Give me, uh, give me I don't know, I mean, red bicycles is sort of a weird thing to do. But I, I tell people all the time, go look stuff up. You'll find that you see every kind of thing. There's all kinds of, um, like, uh, shopping cart style pages, there's WordPress pages, there's regular HTML pages. Very often when you search for things, you know, you'll see any combination appear. Google does not care at all if your page is a WordPress page or a Joomla page or a Weebly page or Drupal page or HTML. Google cares if it's organized and if it has a reason to rank well. You know, maybe I should do some other kind of search, you know, like um, uh, Houston, you know, <laughs> whatever, emergency plumber, right? Who's going to show up? The answer is whoever's got decent pages. This is ASPX.style pages. This is uh, service plumbing, which may, it could be anything. It could be an HTML. It could be an index page in that particular uh, section. Uh, it's so hard to say. Um, like if I do it with a .html, okay, that doesn't work. So, oh, I know why. I need services index.html if I want to put that to the test. Sorry, that was silly of me. And then, um, okay, no. So that's not what it is. But that's only because people use um, panels to deal with stuff very often. It doesn't mean that Google's ranking it better because it's a particular panel like WordPress. No. Google's ranking it because the HTML is clean, right? Because that's what it is. It's HTML anyway. All of it's just coding. The coding of the website is clean. And the pages rank for whatever reason. The website's well organized. It has a good reason to rank, right? Um, what we did was say, HTML doesn't have a panel. We want to create a panel, <laughs> basically, for HTML coding. I mean, and it doesn't need to be Dreamweaver, because Dreamweaver already exists, and it doesn't need to be WordPress, because WordPress is, WordPress is good, and it's also a pain, right? How many of you guys have to deal with WordPress updates? And when WordPress comes out with a new version, how many of your necessary add-ins cracked? They just cracked in half, and they didn't work. And you had to go find new add-ins, and you installed them, and they interfered with other add-ins. And you had to take those other add-ins and find a replacement for them. <laughs> That's a real pain, isn't it? And that exists. Why? Because hackers hack WordPress. So WordPress has to keep updating. And every time they come out with a new coded version of WordPress, it breaks a lot of the add-ins. HTML, no one tries to hack it. It's just too hard to figure it out, right? If I have a website called mojipro.com, okay, how's a hacker going to figure out how to hack that? How, if it was a WordPress site, what would the hacker do? It would look for this right away, wp-admin, and it might find it. And if it finds it, it'll say, log in right here. What's your username? Well, probably admin. All right, what's your pass? Oh, well, let's see if we can crack that. I'm going to crack my knuckles and see if I can crack that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C, D, E, E, D, C, B, A. And that's how the software will go through a bunch of checks real quick trying to log in. All right? That's what happens with WordPress and so on, but not with HTML. If you want to hack this, you're going to have to try to guess my FTP information. It could be ftp.mojipro.com, right? It could be. And then the username could be, oh, who knows what it is. It's probably not admin. It's probably something like Moji P 
are maybe oh, but then if somebody used it, it might be oh five. <laughs> and the password, oh no, I mean it's probably not one two three four five anymore, right? It's probably all this gobbledygook because it's just how people do it. But even then, is that really ftp.mochipro.com? Or is this a subfolder? Is it really like ftp.moji-crew.com slash public underscore HTML, you know, slash, and then like a folder name, and it probably doesn't even have a .com on the end. It's probably like Moji Pro. You see how weird that is? There are too many variables to hack. This is why HTML websites by themselves are more secure. Okay? Because they're too hard to hack. There's no single method a hacker can use to isolate variables with. Okay. All right. Um, a feature for checking keyword density. That's interesting. Right now, here's how you might do it. Let me just show you. This is neat because we used to teach people this stuff all the time. If I open this page in Firefox, cool thing about Firefox is you have all these add-ins. Now, it would be neat to install something like that here, and we could probably figure it out. Right now, I might just go to some page, though. Wap, let me just go to one okay, and close the other tabs. All right. All right. Okay. And then what can I use? I can right click and use something I already attached to Firefox for keyword density. Okay. I looked in the Firefox add in, you know, show keyword density. Uh, what keyword to match on? I don't know. Homeopathy. Okay. Um, Indiana homeopathy, whatever it is, right? And now it tells me everything I need to know. This is the exact same thing that SEO Presser does, or SE Presser, whichever it's called, SEO Presser, in WordPress. It's the same thing. It tells you if it's in your title. It tells you if it's in your body. It tells you if it's in your links and bolded and meta description and stuff. And it tells you how many words and how many matches, so you get the percentages. So every time I make changes to the page in my admin panel, and it even does the highlighting to help you see it, like, yes, it's in the first paragraph, you know, and so on, okay? And it's in the last section, but not the last paragraph, so I might want to find a way to get it in the last paragraph, things like that, right? Maybe if I want to do that. And anyway, then I can just go back, edit the page real quick, and then flip it back open again and check it out. Can you do all of your work inside of Firefox? Yeah, you can be inside the admin panel in Firefox, and you can do the work on these preview pages just so you can quickly uh, identify, right? If you want to check your nofollow links to make sure you have them, if you need them, then there's the Y Explorer add-on for Firefox. You can check out no follow links so if you really had a reason if you had external links to other websites in here and you wanted to make sure that they were no followed then you're expecting this to highlight them okay um as for the firefox add-ons where did i used to have i used to have a list where i have to go back a ways mentally and think about this maybe it's under toolbars toolbar toolbars uh let me see let me just see aha uh, don't use coffee free HTML. That's kind of crappy. Read me first. It was a long time ago, though. Read me first. Maybe it's here, man. Two of our quick notes ready here. You go install and run. Da, 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 da. Keyword analysis. Oh, yeah. Look at this. It's down here. It's, most, it's like halfway down the page. I have these add ons for Firefox that were really cool. So I can just paste the link in here. For those of you guys who are watching this later, just go to moji-crew, right, my main website there, that dot crew, or moji-crew.com slash toolbars, plural, okay? And when it brings up the index there, hit read me first, and about halfway down it, uh, you'll just happen to see where it's got this list of add-ons for Firefox that are just really, really, really cool, okay? And that's neat stuff all right Y Explorer you're asking the name of it not X Explorer but Y Explorer what letter Y and where you had the letter X yeah. so you can look for that all right as far as just general questions and so on anybody have other questions am I missing anything there in particular do you have a feature when you want to yeah, okay, that's how you can check SEO very easily anyway. We never did really need add-ons because in Firefox it's just so simple. You know, once the add-on's there, just use that one. We don't need to reinvent the wheel for something that easy. Uh, but if we find a reason to or a point, 
then that'll be good. Like for instance, when we create the spun version bit, we do think it's important to put in the difference of per, uh, the percentage differentiation from the original. So that will happen. We will make sure about that. Okay. All right. See, we might try to do uh, use the template server. Oh, by the way, this is cool. Think about this. When we go to okay, global variables. Global variables are set up just like uh, tokens, right? Just like you would think of tokens. Okay, and this is the way we do it in Moji, except what? For these tokens, you use words, company, owner, uh, position one, whatever that is, is POS1 maybe. So these are words, right? In Moji, how do we do it? It is always VAR number, VAR1, VAR2, VAR1348. Okay, so... Those are the differences. If I put something into a page that just says var, right, like a token, let me just stick one in here, like with like, okay, I'm just going to put it here so it's easy to see, var, one, two, three, okay, that's like a Moji token, right? Could I have Moji tokens all throughout this page if I wanted? Yes, let me show you why, update and reload. Okay. This is me setting up the page so I can distribute it and make it work for Moji, right? That's the idea. Okay, in that case, or I'm copying in content that would work. Guess what? It shows the token just the right way. Okay. So if I then run this page after I exported it, if I run this through Moji, if I import this with the Moji toolbar, right? And I import the web page I created right here and I do my thing, I can do it, or if I already have my bars in there, I already have my bars in there, okay, because maybe I already have a bar sheet set up for whatever I'm pasting in here, okay. Point is, these bars are not getting dropped, okay, even though they don't exist. Why do you not see it on here? Because it doesn't exist on here, in, and so it just treats it like text. Isn't that awesome? So we have two different things being used. If I want, I can create a var in here, var123, and if I actually added one, and I just said some weird thing like moji var, okay, and I said I'm going to call it, you know, var123, okay, all right, except probably in this case it would be capital VAR, I think it has to be, I think. Yeah, only uppercases are acceptable. That's another thing. Moji doesn't use uppercases, right? It just VAR, no uppercases. Okay, so that's different, isn't it? And I don't even think that'll work in here because of that. It would have to be a capital VAR. I wonder if that would overwrite. I don't know if it will. And then this is going to be, I'll just, I'll just call it, you know, uh, keyword with an exclamation point. Save it. See if it takes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> nope. Ain't that cool? Because it's lowercase. Funny. Let me edit the page. I'm just curious. All I want to do is make sure they cannot interfere with each other. I like that it's still just being treated like text. Okay. There. Now that I made it capital. Yeah, perfect. Great. So this system requires capitals, capital letters, and Moji requires lowercase VAR, and that's what makes it awesome. They don't interfere with each other. You can do these sets of variables separate, okay? And that's what's cool. So it's very, very easy. It will be very easy for us, us to integrate these, these um, setups, right, and make it continue to work properly, okay? All right, guys, I mean, there's more to come. I'll wind up doing uh, some videos where I actually just start doing some websites. How hard is it, again, do you think, if I took a website and started to emulate? And the answer is it's not really hard. Just go through all the sections. You know, obviously, for demos, you do it small. If a guy's paying you or if you know what you're doing it for, you go all out, okay? And go, just go through the sections. Make sure you update the email, then go back. The website title, you leave that thing alone. Just leave that sit like that. That's the way it would normally be. Website logo, get your other image ready. Browse. If you don't have it on the server, if it doesn't exist, just hit upload. Choose it from wherever you have it. I don't know where I have one right now. <laughs> uh, actually, I could upload something, I think. So let me just upload something so you can kind of see. Let's just upload that so I can upload it. And that way, now it's here, and it's already highlighted for me, so I could select it. Just double-click it. WAP. 
And when I do that and hit update, it just did it. Now my whole website uses my new logo, right? And if I don't like all the white area, that's why I would knock it out. I would make it a PNG and knock it out, you know. But you, you, it's up to you. What do you want to do for the background image anyway, you know? Uh, it's completely up to you how you want to set all this stuff up, okay? So then just keep going, you know. And by the way, let me just flip it back so I don't confuse other people with it. <laughs> uh -huh. And I can tell that these are PNG images because it's showing pitch black wherever there is no information for the image. It's showing the information for the image is, you know, colors and stuff. Otherwise, it's just pitch black. And that's exactly that. Okay? And so then I can keep on going. General meta tag. So I have a meta tag information to paste in here for a certain meta tag. I can do that. Uh, analytics coding. Oh, you know, I could put one in here. You know, then go back. What else? Call us header text you, to book an appointment or whatever you want to say. You know, go back. And just keep going, right? Opening days, beginning day, end day. Guess what? I use variables for these now. I don't just say open Monday through Friday because it might see that in different places on my site. I say open beginning day of business to ending day of business. So watch this. Opening days and header. Sorry. Hit global variables. I've got a beginning day, not beginning date. That's the beginning date when the business opened. But I got it like a first business day of the week. Copy that. That's FBD. Double click, paste. And then this is LBD for last business day. So I could just paste it and adjust it really fast. It's just quicker. Update. There. And that way, whatever I put for the beginning day and the opening day is what it uses. So if it's not Monday through Friday, but like Tuesday through Saturday, then I just change the information here for those days. Wherever it said, yeah, first business day, I'm going to say Tuesday. And then the last business day, I'm going to say Saturday. Okay, update, update. See that? And there, not just here. And, yeah, when you, maybe we should create more room for the longer days anyway. Monday through Friday just happens to fare really well. But um, all throughout the entire website, any other pages where I have beginning business day through ending business day, ah, right here, see that? Tuesday through Saturday, and guess what else I have? Beginning business time through ending business time. So I can decide what I want there. Isn't that cool? And yeah, you can do this as far as you want. You can take it as far as you want, use whatever variables you want. That ain't bad, huh? Anyway, we're just at the beginning. Free updates for a year. Anybody uh, not have it yet, remember where to get it, right? Because we're going to be to the end of our pre-launch special soon. All this stuff is coming complete with the API. Pretty soon you're going to be able to spin the pages. Shortly after that, we integrate Moji. Shortly after that, there's going to be the deployable or the deployable will come first. And then after that, um, well, API, then deployable, then integration with Moji, then the updates to the deployable, then what? Then we start opening it up for developers to create into it and then there's going to be just an explosion of design development new templates new concepts new modules that do things we would like uh, for any industries you know and that's neat isn't it and what do we do along the way teach you guys the fastest most efficient ways to make money and what do you see along the way if you're even selling website designs to people who desperately need it because they have bad websites and your websites look better and they recognize that right away when you send them a picture, <laughs> you know, with some of their information in it so they can see the point, then one out of five guys is going to respond and say, I'm really interested. And you can show them a live demo and they'll say, I'm buying how much? And you can name your price, whatever you feel after feeling them out. You can just throw them a number however much you want to work on it and however much you want to have them do. You can have different service levels depending on your skill sets. And if they say, do you also do this? You can say, not really. You'll need to hire someone else for that for a different amount. I'm doing my part for my money, and then you hire them for their money. You know, just this is, this is the way it is. And they'll say, okay, I know it because I've done it a million times. Guys used to come to me in, with Moji runs and ask for really advanced programming into the run. I'll say, sorry, I don't do the advanced programming. I can do the Moji part but I don't do the advanced programming. If you have code snippets, I can incorporate them. That's easy. Uh, but I don't do the advanced programming. You'll have to hire someone else for that, and they'll say, okay. That's the same thing with SEO. 
I don't do SEO, you'll hire an SEO guy to do your SEO on the finished website. Guess what? That works. So if you don't feel like doing SEO for people because you don't really understand it, you don't have to. You know, you do not have to. But the flip side is this. We do make these pages with SEO friendly fields. So you can do starter SEO, the proper kind of SEO, general SEO. The most important stuff is the title of the page, right? And the meta description tags. And yes, you can put variables in there if you want, the global variables. And yes, as we get further, you can put moji variables in here and run them out with moji variables. Okay? Then that'll fill in your title tag and your meta description tag for you. Wouldn't that be cool? I mean, you can actually do it now. Right? If you understand enough about moji, you can do it now. Okay? We'll just make it easier as we go. All right? So anyway, if you see ways to make money with this and you get the point, go ahead and get this. Beat the clock and get it now. It's cheap. We're babying our guys right now. We really are doing our best, and we're taking care of you guys, and we're just making things as cool as we can. If you know anything about me, when I fall in love with a thing, I push it to the hilt. You know, we did T-Fan, and we fell in love with it, and we just really drove it to the hilt. We went as far as we could go and taught people tons. Then we did Moji, and you see Moji get developed for years and just keep becoming more and more interesting with every passing year. At the end of a year, you look back and say, wow, I can barely remember what it was like at the beginning of the year. It's changed so much. Well, guess what? We're falling in love with this T to H. Really, I think HTML needed an admin panel of its own. I think we're creating a really good one here. Not to say ours is the only one. I'm sure there are others out there that do different things. But we think what we're doing in our image um, will work for our purposes very, very well. And we think it's going to make the world much easier for you to make money in. You know, sell your skill sets. You can do stuff online people couldn't do before. You're sitting in your cubicle. is now your office at home doing your part of a job for somebody. And, it, and since it's this easy, you can find other guys to streamline with. Find a guy who's good at writing. Find a guy who's good with images if you feel like it. And then you guys can cram it together. And pretty soon, there's going to be developers developing stuff in here that you're going to be able to snatch and apply. And that's kind of cool. We just think this is neat. Like, I can't even imagine where we're going to be in a year. You've heard me say that before, right? <laughs> and it's true. Well, here we go again. That's what's going on. All right, guys. With that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thanks a lot for coming. It was great that you guys came. I can't wait to see what happens at the Super Bowl. Boy, I hope I'm just going to be on the cheering side of the winning team <laughs> at the end. But hey, if not, my Aunt Judy lives in Colorado, and she'll be the one who gets to crack up and be all happy. And I'll, I'll, I'll congratulate her. <laughs> there you go, Aunt Judy. <laughs> She's looking forward to the game, too. All right, I'll chat with you guys later. And thanks for coming and everything else. Don't miss out on anything. And, um, yeah, just thanks for your support. It's what makes it possible for us to invent. All right, well, take care. And see you guys soon. Thanks a lot. I get this recording up, and I get it on the site here sometime soon. Send you guys a follow-up link probably tomorrow. Uh, so you guys will know where it's at. All right, take care. Thanks a lot.